here is the itinerary, the trip that my daughter and I took with National Geographic over the holidays in 2014-2015. In part one, I focused on chimpanzees in Uganda. In part two, we are going to focus on gorillas in both Uganda and Rwanda. We drove towards the Congo border as we started the second half of our trip. Our next stop was the Bowindi Impenetrable National Park. That's a tongue twister. We traveled through the remote southern section of the Queen Elizabeth National Park, known as Ishasha, the same name as the river that runs along the border with the Congo. There are less than 900 mountain gorillas left in the wild. This is such a tragedy. Mountain gorillas live in groups of up to 30. The group or troop is led by a single alpha male. These males are called silverbacks because of the silver stripe they develop on the backs when they mature. The oldest males of the group are at least 12 years old. In addition to providing protection to group members, silverbacks maintain order, and decide all the activities within their troop. They schedule feeding trips, resting time, and travel. They also father the majority of the young in the group. Aside from the silver stripe on their backs, male mountain gorillas are distinguished from females because they have a crest of fur on their heads. Both genders have similar thick black hair covering their bodies this thick hair keeps them warm in cold mountain temperatures. Female gorillas can produce young beginning at age 10. They carry one or two babies at a time and give birth after an eight and a half month gestation period, very similar to human beings. In general, they will bear between two and six offspring in a lifetime. Newborn gorillas weigh about um, two pounds at birth. They are as weak and uncoordinated as human babies. For the first four years of their lives, they get around uh, by clinging to their mother's backs. And by three and a half years of age, the young gorillas are fully weaned from their mother's milk and start the same diet as mature mountain gorillas, which are plants, leaves, roots, and shoots. And these are the trackers that joined us. As I mentioned earlier, there are three groups of habituated mountain gorillas left in the world. The group that lives in the Bowindi National Forest is the Rushagura group. Each of the gorillas are named and monitored on a daily basis. It's not only a conservation issue of ensuring the existence of an endangered species, it is also essential to the livelihoods of thousands upon thousands of people. Tourism is the main industry of this area. We hiked for about three hours and suddenly the gorillas appeared out of the forest. Let's take a listen. <laughs>
There are males, females, juveniles, babies, and the leader, the silverback. Almost silent, they lay on the ground, seeming to be recovering from some strenuous activity. Other than looking for food or finding a place to sleep, they just relax, unless they are attacked by poachers, which sadly happens. The poachers are looking for baby gorillas to traffic. The adults will fight to the death to protect their young. We are only allowed to stay 30 minutes. Other groups have already been observing, and others will come later. These gorillas are habituated to humans seeing them every single day. There are other groups that have no human contact and only are observed by workers, making sure that they are not in danger. They live much higher up in the forest and deeper into the Congo, where sadly to say, a civil war has raged on for decades. Now recently I heard about tours that allow small groups of only up to maybe four people plus the guide to observe up to one hour. Of course, this opportunity would cost substantially more than the experience that I had. We quickly discover the gorillas. We find them sitting together under the trees. Now look at the lashes on this juvenile. This gorilla is building a nest in a tree. Then you can see the finished nest. They sleep up off of the ground. Now I love this picture. He looks so calm and peaceful. He is a silverback. He's like sunning himself. Look at these infants. They're so adorable, all fuzzy and wide-eyed. They stay very close to the adults. 